Are you ready to learn Spanish the Mexican way? If so, this video is for you. Today I'll be sharing all of my favorite resources that have helped me learn Spanish, specifically the kind of Spanish spoken in Mexico. I divided this video into chapters so you can find exactly what you're looking for. The next section of this video will be about different YouTubers who I really enjoy watching not only because they help me with my listening comprehension but also because they are fun and educational. So let's start with traveling. One one of my favorite travel YouTube channels is Tourist to Local and this is the name of their Spanish channel and this is why they're so great. They make every video in both languages, English and Spanish. So what you could hypothetically do is watch their Spanish videos first and then if you miss some key words or you kind of are confused, you can watch their English video to help supplement that information that you didn't understand. Juliana is from the United States and Martine is from Mexico so together they just are this adorable couple who really are so passionate about traveling and they love showing each other their countries and it makes for a really fun viewing experience. Luisito Comunica. Okay, need I say more, he's probably on every list for Mexican YouTubers just because he is probably one of the most iconic Latin American YouTubers there is and that is for good reason. He makes a lot of videos, he's been in the YouTube game for quite some time so he's no stranger to making content about many different things but one of his most popular topics is travel and he goes to so many different countries and he has taught me a lot about different places and their strange customs like he really likes showcasing interesting customs and I think that makes it really fun and he's of course Mexican so you will really learn how Mexicans speak and he's not the hardest youtuber to understand I have a pretty okay time following along with what he's saying so if you are somewhat intermediate with Spanish you should have no trouble watching his videos the next YouTube channel is Alan Por El Mundo and my boyfriend Alan actually recommended this channel to me his videos are really cinematic okay they're really well made really well edited and they're also very educational. I would say they're more serious than Luisito Comunica's videos so if you want more of like the professional side of travel youtubers in Spanish then this is probably the channel for you but he makes a lot of videos about many different topics from trying tacos to showing the Titanic so it's really interesting and another great channel to pick up if you're interested in traveling. Now let's talk about YouTube channels that are specifically dedicated to helping you learn Spanish. So so one of my favorites is Butterfly Spanish and I love it because the creator just seems like the cutest sweetest person ever. She will like teach you new words and tenses but she does so in a very engaging way so you really feel like you're just a student in her class so it just feels really welcoming and accessible to learn Spanish. It's not overwhelming, she breaks it down in a really nice way and she shows you lots of examples. Another awesome resource is Mextalki and what makes this channel so great is that it's just two young guys basically chatting about a whole range of things. They have a podcast which is definitely more informal. Sometimes they have guests but usually it's just the two of them chatting about many different things and for me it's really helpful seeing how young guys talk because as someone like who is dating a Mexican sometimes I'm around his friends and I just can't really understand what they're saying and like the jokes that they make and stuff because Mexicans I've noticed really like jokes. Like they will joke a lot and sometimes it's hard to follow but you know they'll be like oh es un chiste local or whatever. I'm just like, ah, I want to be like in on this cheese day, but I don't know what you're saying or something. So if you are kind of like me and you want to learn how people use the language in a super informal way, then Mextalki is a great choice. Another great YouTuber is Elista Vega. Now she is not Mexican, but she speaks Spanish so well. And I do believe that people in the comments have said she sounds like a native Spanish speaker, specifically from Mexico. She also makes videos about learning other languages and also resources for Spanish. Easy Spanish is a wonderful YouTube channel that I used to use a lot. It is perfect for beginners and low intermediate people because they have a lot of videos about different topics. So you can really choose the topics that you know about or you want to learn about because they have so many videos. They're always uploading. It's a very active YouTube channel, I would say. I love Easy Spanish so much that I even used to subscribe to the Patreon. So I would read the transcript, watch the video, read the transcript again look up the new words and it was a great way to self-study. 
Now we're moving on to the little miscellaneous section. So this is the part of the video where I'll be sharing with you YouTubers and influencers who you should watch, but they don't really fall into any of the aforementioned categories. They're just kind of doing their own thing. So here they are. Adrián Marcelo is a YouTuber from Monterrey who does a lot of interviews, travel vlogs, and challenges. He tends to go up to the locals in the city that he's visiting and he asks them a lot of different questions. So it's a good way to learn about the diversity of Spanish in Mexico because every state speaks Spanish in such a different way. He's also a pretty comedic man so you may pick up on some Mexican jokes and humor as well. Abriendo Libros is a channel by an author who I will be talking about later on in this video. He makes videos about books so he shows his books, the ones he's written of course, and also ones that he's just been enjoying, ones that maybe he doesn't like as much. So if you are into a book too, but then this is a good channel you may want to watch. Isla Vlogs does a lot of vlogs, as the name suggests. He also does street interviews, and I would say that this is probably his most common format. He will go in crowds, ask them questions, get them to do little challenges, and it's funny seeing the random responses that people have. He's a pretty casual and chill YouTuber, so if you want to check his channel out, that is a good option. Son Rix is an influencer from Chiapas and he likes to make comedic skits about Mexico. He is also dating a French Canadian influencer and together they like to showcase the differences between Canada and Mexico. Now let's talk about some lifestyle YouTubers. So the first one is Marie Molly, and her older videos are more about challenges, like she would, for example, go to the store and try to live off a certain amount of pesos per week, and it was really fun seeing which products she could buy for that allotted amount of money. So she did like a lot of like little challenges and popular trends on her channel, and nowadays she's making more vlogs about her life because she recently moved out of her parents' house, so it's really cool seeing what her life is like now that she's living alone. And I've been following her journey. I love her videos. And if you are interested in more research-backed content, stuff about psychology, productivity, as well as vlogs and like some podcast style videos, then you might really like Telma Klatze. The next YouTuber is Carla Canseco or Carla's Notes. She is the owner of both of these channels, but they're both very different. Carla's Notes is all about note taking and bullet journaling and things like that. Her second channel called Carla Canseco is really appealing to me because she shows basically everyday life as an influencer in Mexico who lives in Veracruz. Another YouTuber is Amaranta Velasquez, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm saying this wrong, but she's a newer YouTuber who I encountered and she's also from Mexico and what I like about her videos is just like the realness of them like she really doesn't do fancy editing she will just pick up her camera record the most random things so if you want someone who seems just like a nice friend who shows what her life is like as a university student then Amaranta is a good choice Another YouTuber is Bola de Arroz sorry for my R's I still need to work on that their content is lifestyle but also more kind of academic-ish. I'm just creating words here but basically she shows like her desk setup, her room, kind of like stationary, like just very chill, simple little things and she edits in a really cute way. So. All right, let's talk about movies. I absolutely love watching movies in Spanish because it's such a passive way of studying. Even on days when you don't really feel like pulling out a notebook or reading a book, you can still practice and you can maybe put on English subtitles if you're newer to Spanish or you can put on Spanish subtitles and keep the language in its original form and that way you also have to understand what's happening. So regardless of your level, put on those movies. Okay, so let's start with the first movie and it is Soteras or Ready to Mingle. Basically this woman really wants to settle down and get married and find like this awesome person but she ends up tricking the guy who she's dating and realizes her wrongdoing. So it's just kind of one of those cheesy movies you can pop on and it will help you learn Spanish as well. The next movie is Anonymously Yours which is a really cute young adult romance. Basically these two teenagers end up exchanging numbers and it's just kind of like a fluke incident and they end up chatting and developing feelings for one another but they don't realize that they had already met in person before so it's just a cute chill movie and I haven't seen it in a while so I think I'm actually gonna watch it after filming this video. Another awesome movie to 
to check out is We Are the Nobles and basically it's about a family who is very wealthy and the father is sick of his spoiled entitled adult children so he pretends that they are broke, like extremely broke. They learn a lot about each other along the way. This premise has been done before in other movies but it's still fun to watch and that kind of makes it easier to understand because you know that they're gonna start off really greedy and then end in a more humble way so it's a fun progression I think. De Viaje con los Terbes is a Mexican reality TV show that follows an actor and his family as they go together to Morocco for the first time. So not only will you learn about this really lovely country as they go on a hot air balloon, they visit a family, they learn about the different animals and landscapes there, but you'll also learn Mexican Spanish in a very realistic way because it is supposed to be unscripted so they go through these situations that are not the most glamorous, especially in season two, which I am currently watching when they go to the United States on a camping trip. So overall it's a lot of fun, there's lots of drama, but I really do enjoy it and it has been helping me tremendously with my Spanish. Como si fuera la primera vez is basically the Mexican version of 50 First Dates with Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. The guy is a marine biologist who ends up falling in love with this girl who has memory problems so they kind of have to figure out how their relationship will move forward. So it's just a really easy movie to watch and actually the main guy in this one is one of the guys in the show that I just mentioned, De Viaje con los Derbez. He is Eugenio Derbez's son so it's nice to see how he is in real life versus in the movie. Nothing to see here is a recently released Mexican comedy about a man who is blind and he is sick of living in Querétaro so he decides to move with his best friend to Mexico City and along the way they make some friends, they face a lot of hurdles and also they accomplish their dream which is becoming a comedian and his friend is like his kind of manager so they work together, they're best friends and they fight along the way like their relationship is far from perfect but it's a really interesting show. I will say that this is probably better for advanced Spanish speakers. I watched it with Alan and he really had to help me because there were a lot of words I did not know when watching this. Just keep that in mind. It's not the easiest show but it's a really good one to check out. Daughter from Another Mother is a really lovely show. I had a lot of fun watching it with Alan and it follows two women who find out that their babies were switched at birth. So they ended up taking each other's child home, raised it for a few months, and they grew attached to each other's child unknowingly. So when they find out that their children were actually switched, this attachment really prevents them from cutting ties with one another. So they decide to create this dynamic where they still get to see both of the babies because they love both of them. They're a biological child and they're kind of like adopted switched at birth child. The most beautiful flower is a TV show probably aimed towards teenagers but I liked watching it because it takes place near Ochimilco which is the place in Mexico where they go on these boats. Now I apologize I don't remember the name of these boats but it's really cool because the main character takes one of these boats to school every day. Overall it follows the main character Mitch who ends up having a lot of love triangles. Not gonna lie it's kind of an excessive amount because she ends up really liking a whole bunch of different people throughout the course of the show but there's also another component so it's not just romance there's also a lot of rivalry with her cousin who is kind of well not kind of is very popular whereas Mitch the protagonist is not at all popular she has her little group of friends but no one really knows her and recognizes her as much as her cousin if you are struggling to find some of these movies and TV shows then I would recommend using a VPN and setting it to Mexico this doesn't always work but it has helped me access more Mexican content. All right, let's talk about podcasts. Learn Mexican Spanish with Diego is a very educational podcast. Each episode, which ranges between 20 to 30 minutes, is packed with grammar, vocabulary, and other information that will help you learn Spanish just like that. Español a la Mexicana is a podcast by a woman who speaks in a very nice and clear way. She makes episodes that predominantly focus on culture in Mexico, so it's a great option for those of you who are tired of listening to grammar, vocabulary. You can push those topics aside and just tune in to cultural aspects about Mexico in Spanish. Another really good one that is specific to Mexico is Hablemos Español and I really like this one because as I said it's 
Mexican specific and fun to listen to in a very casual and authentic way. I would say the Spanish Duolingo podcast is a great tool because they say a lot of things in English while speaking slowly in Spanish. So even if you are A2, you'll still be able to understand what's going on. My sister is learning Spanish and she's at an A2 level right now and she really likes the Duolingo Spanish podcast. And I cannot forget Teleando with Mextaki. I absolutely love this podcast. I've listened to so many of their episodes and it's definitely more geared towards advanced or upper intermediate listeners just because they talk about many different topics. They don't really say things in English the way some of these other podcasts do so if you are at a higher level then it's a great choice music. Okay, there are so many songs that I absolutely love in Spanish. However, I can't say that what I listen to is only Mexican. Like, I listen to a lot of artists from varying countries, and sometimes they are not easy to understand. Like, I will listen to Bad Bunny, okay? I will. <laughs> no shame here. But do I understand what he's saying? No. No, I don't. But if we really want to listen to music specifically to learn new words, to learn different expressions, different conjugations, then here are some songs to check out. Dime Ven by Motel is a song that can help teach you the imperative, which is basically a mood you use when you are making commands. They repeat Dime with different endings, so it's a lot of repetition. Los Imanes can help you with the subjunctive, which is so tricky for a lot of English speakers because we don't use it often in English. And the other song is Solo con verte and it can help you with direct object pronouns. Honestly, these songs are all wonderful, but I wanted to just pick a few, so here are some more that I recommend. If there's one thing you should know about me, it is that I love books, including Spanish ones. The problem, however, is that it has been a bit difficult finding books that use Mexican Spanish or at least Latin American Spanish. I just want to say that there are, of course, lots of Mexican authors who I deeply admire, but the selection for their books is very limited where I live in Canada. Plus, some books by Mexican authors may be too complex for beginner and intermediate language learners, so I wanted to find ones that would be really relevant to you and ones that you could find regardless of where you live. As you've probably heard, Spanish from Spain is very different, which is the case with this book. So a lot of books that have been originally written in English do have Spanish versions, but they use Spanish from Spain. So this one, for example, uses Vosotros, making it a little bit difficult if you want to focus on Mexico. So here are some resources that I have specifically found to help you. Magazines. So this is a Mexican magazine, so all of the vocabulary vocabulary is going to be relevant to the country and it's also not too hard to read because not only is it a magazine which means that there isn't really a lot of text as opposed to a novel but it also includes lots of pictures and it's for children so the vocabulary is already going to be at a lower level which is perfect if you're a beginner so this one is actually one that my suegra or my mother-in-law gifted me a few years ago she just brought it to me while I was at their house and she was like, I thought of you, maybe you could read it and practice. And I did just that, I still have it. So if you want to go through it and practice a little bit, then that's a great option. Even if you can't find this specific brand, I would still recommend looking for magazines. I also wanted to let you know that I was able to find this magazine through my local library and I'm assuming that you can also find it through yours as well. They have a digital collection with all kinds of Mexican Spanish magazines as well as newspapers. I thought it was really cool how I was able to filter which state I wanted, so I chose Queretaro and read some newspapers from there. Another option for those of you who have been struggling to find Mexican Spanish resources is this thing right here. So yes, my suegra actually gifted this to me as well and I am really thankful because I never would have considered reading cookbooks for language practice. So sure, you can learn about cooking, why not? I mean, Mexican food is delicious, but you can also learn about produce that's available in Mexico, learn about different food vocabulary, different dishes that will be probably introduced to you once you visit this marvelous country and you will learn about the imperativo which is like the command mood so essentially when you are telling someone what to do you use imperativo and a cookbook is telling you what to do measure this do this do that so you can see a lot of verbs being conjugated with the imperative mood in cookbooks so it's kind of like a two-in-one you're learning vocabulary 
and a bit of grammar. Ocho Lugares Que Me Recuerdan A Ti is a wonderful book for many reasons. First of all, it's not too thick, so you can actually get the satisfaction of finishing it despite it being in your additional language. And another great thing is that it is for young adults, which means the vocabulary is not too complex. Thirdly, it's by a Mexican author. This is so hard to come by. As I've said, most books that I've found anyway use Spanish that is not really applicable to Mexico, so this feels like a really big win. It basically follows this young guy who falls in love with this girl from Spain, and while she lives in Mexico temporarily, she ends up moving back to Spain and he follows her there. So he really wants to remind her why they are in love and everything. So it's kind of like this journey of him trying to win back his true first love. However, in the end, things don't really go as planned and he realizes the importance of friendship. So I want to just say that this book is probably more towards teenagers, young adult audiences as I've mentioned, but it is really fun and I really enjoyed it and I've read it a few times now. Every time I do, I learn new words and expressions that I didn't catch the first time. So yeah, it's really good. Also, the author has a YouTube channel about books, which is pretty cool. Aquellos Dias by Sure Zurita is a book that is a bit on the difficult side. I must admit it's not the easiest read, but it is so cool because, of course, this author is Mexican, which is a win, but also it takes place in Tabasco. I love Tabasco. It is probably my favorite state in Mexico, so to read a book that is about Tabasco, which is a pretty underlooked state, I would say. It's really amazing, and I'm only 31 pages in, truth be told, but I'm gonna keep reading it. This is my current read, and it follows the protagonist and her mother. They move to Tabasco after her father unfortunately passes away in a work accident, so they're kind of like on this, I believe it's a farm, and they're just sort of like moving there, so it's still very fresh. I'm still you know, getting into the story here, but I'm gonna keep reading it. Yo No Soy Tu Perfecta Hija Mexicana is a book that follows a girl who lives in Chicago and her parents are from Mexico. The book starts off with the passing of her older sister and her older sister was kind of like this uh, maybe golden child, if you will. She was really perfect. The parents really valued her, whereas the younger sister, the protagonist, always kind of felt like the child who was left out. She has her own own flaws, ways of viewing the world that contradict her parents. However, as the story progresses, she ends up finding out that her sister wasn't as maybe innocent as she had always appeared, but her sister is no longer alive, so she can't really get the answers that she's looking for. So it's a bit of a mystery, but it's not really like a mystery book. It's kind of like a drama. This book is originally in English and it was translated into Spanish, so it doesn't exactly fit the requirements of, you know, being by a Mexican author being originally in Spanish, but I feel like it's close enough. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Good luck and buena suerte with your language learning journey.